Hi and welcome to Matrix Moments. This is Saloni and on today's episode we have Shashank Mehta, the founder of The Whole Truth, formerly known as And Nothing Else, a 100% clean label healthy food snack brand. Within the first 9 months of existence, the brand sold over 3 lakh bars, garnered a super engaged following of over 90k brand lovers and won multiple emerging brand awards and accolades. This episode will be moderated by Sanjot Mali, director at Matrix Partners India. Sanjot and Shashank dive deep into the brand story, starting with Shashank's real motive and personal journey behind setting this up. Why Matrix was excited to be a part of the journey with Shashank, the massive problem that exists within the packaged food industry and how the whole truth aims to solve for it, key milestones that led to the brand's early success, and finally the reason behind the recent brand transformation exercise that was undertaken to further accurately represent what the brand stands for which is the whole truth about healthy food tune in welcome everyone uh, shashank thank you for joining us uh, on your first episode of of matrix moments it's a it's a pleasure we've been speaking about this for a while so it's good to finally have you thank you so much for having me look forward to it awesome So why don't we start Shashank with uh, with how we met and how our journey together started uh, I remember I I ruined your vacation in in Tel Aviv uh, and I'm sure your wife still hates me for it uh, but but why don't you tell the viewers a little bit about you know your personal background and and of course uh, a little bit about how our journey started Right so yes you gave away the uh, the Tel Aviv bit uh, so let me delve into it from two two lenses one is because what we are doing today is a culmination of both my personal and professional uh, journey uh, professionally i was working with unilever before uh, i started out building and nothing else which is now the whole truth and uh, i was in my notice period and i was taking what i thought would be uh, maybe my last vacation for a long time to come in in israel when uh, when you called in and i must say that i was quite surprised uh, uh you know that you reached out because uh, i had no clue that a, a fund like matrix would be interested in doing a proper pre seed like a paper plan investment in a cpg company there were like too many what the hell is happening here going on in my head at that time uh yeah but i must say like the the speed at which you guys moved was uh, amazing so i was working with unilever in 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 marketing uh the building this brand called ayush uh there uh, before i left to build and nothing else uh, and personally which is a large part of the, the journey which led to uh, me starting up uh, so been a really really obese kid all my childhood and teenage life uh, when i was 19 years of age i was about 110 kg uh, and then one day i just i don't know what it was maybe it was a girl's rejection or something i can't <laughs> fully remember but uh, Uh, i just went back shit crazy and i lost uh you know 40 kgs in 9 months and I, i at that time i had no education in fitness and weight loss i just stopped eating and i started running uh and then once i got thin i thought hey thin is equal to fit and now i am like one of those thin guys so i can eat and drink and do whatever the thin guys do uh and i started doing that and lo and behold all of it came back in the next 2 3 years uh then i lost it again then it came back again then i lost it again then it came back again so i've done this uh, uh plus minus 25 30 kg cycle thrice in life uh which goes to prove i'm not uh, the smartest cookie around because i should have figured it out uh, in one go uh, but i it was at the end of this third cycle that i started thinking that i might be daft but i can't be that stupid that you know i keep doing the same mistake again and again uh Uh, which is when i started researching and educating myself about food and fitness uh, which is also the time when i started writing my blog it's called fit shit uh, where i used to do these long 1500 word technical breakdowns of you know the basics of food and fitness and that pretty much was the genesis of leading up to starting up in the food and fitness space because i was at a time when people were telling me that you know it's the age of instagram and no one even looks at a photograph photograph forget about reading 1500 word articles people were pouring in people were asking questions and you know relating to what i was writing uh yeah so that was the that was the insight that i got that 
the indian consumer at least a small chunk of it is is ready uh, and they are worried about their food and they want to know a lot more uh, uh, and and you know today's brands are not doing justice to what this consumer is asking for so yeah seen marketing from the inside in unilever seen food and fitness uh, personally multiple times and the culmination of these two things led to starting up yeah and you know we we as a fund speak about being founders first and uh, and i think this investment was as founders first as as they come like you mentioned it was pre product pre launch certainly um and i remember what st- struck me was was two things i think one was just the the mission and the and the purpose that you had in in building this brand uh, you spoke about the journey you know from obesity and back and back and forth for yourself and i remember you and i bonding over having that fat kid syndrome and and i think yeah. that still drives up both of us in, in no small small part very true uh, um, that mission combined with a very specific uh market problem that consumers suffer from i think that 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 confluence is is really what uh, got us very very excited uh in addition to of course your capability so coming to the second part um you know you and i have spoken about the specific problem and this dichotomy that exists in in the market where people are becoming a little bit more conscious about eating healthy and wellness and and actually if you look at the numbers you know that part of the market is growing twice as fast as the overall or overall market but at the same time lifestyle diseases are at at are at all time highs and growing right obesity heart disease and so on so talk a little bit more about the specific problem that you're solving and and how you sort of thought about that and 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 the solution yeah i think that dichotomy sets up the problem in the starkest way possible right that uh, food and fitness depending on how you define it is either a 1 trillion dollar industry globally or a 4 trillion dollar industry globally uh and this industry this part of the global gdp is growing at 2x of global gdp and yet all markers obesity health uh, you know heart disease uh diabetes are at all time highs uh, even in a country like india we used to actually be a fairly fit population uh uh we used to have only 12% people who were overweight about 15 20 years ago that number has gone up to 20% that number for the us is 40% uh, and growing so so how is it that the people who are supposed to solve this problem are growing massively and yet the problem is worsening clearly something is broken and and when you you know if when you cut off the refresh because it's such a cluttered market it actually comes down to just two things right if i keep the wellness and mental wellness and well being part of the industry aside uh biologically physically it comes down to food and exercise right that's how consumers understand it there is food and exercise and the age old adage is true that 80% of the problem gets solved by food uh in fact food is the curative part of the uh, problem exercise is normally the sorry food is the preventive part and and exercise is normally the curative part people get on to the exercise bandwagon generally when things have already gone wrong yeah so so fundamentally thinking about it it was clear to me that if you have to solve this dichotomy uh you have to start with food uh right uh, because solving it at its root requires to solve it from the inside uh otherwise you'll always be chasing two steps behind the problem yeah yeah absolutely so actually let's come to the solution and and you know for our viewers who may not know this company started out as as being called and nothing else as the brand and recently we've made a transition so why don't we start with the the first part of the journey and nothing else how were you going about the solution and and how did you know there are some there's something working early on right so uh see once i came down to this point that food is what i want to solve for uh i started thinking about you know a lot of people used to write in to me during the fit shit days and ask me is this healthy should i have this cookie should i have this is this healthy and it's a very tough question to answer right someone thinks keto is healthy someone thinks vegan is healthy someone thinks high protein is healthy someone thinks low sugar is healthy what is healthy so i had this constant pursuit in my head as i used to write the blogs that i want to arrive at this one universal principle of answering what is healthy uh and i think after 2 years of writing the blog it struck me that good food is made of good ingredients 
if you put in good natural homely ingredients in food all your macros all your micros will sort themselves out yeah so rather than attack the problem through specific lenses of high protein low sugar high fat low fat attack it through the innate which is the ingredients right and the the clue there was your mom's food no one ever got fat or unhealthy eating at home why yeah and by the way everyone thinks that their mom's food is the tastiest why because of the ingredients because she sources locally she doesn't put anything that came out of a chemistry lab into your food and she makes it fresh uh, right so so that was the uh, uh, big realization uh, where now when people ask me uh, is this healthy i would tell them turn the pack and and just read the list of ingredients if there is something that you can't pronounce or you haven't heard of or isn't found in your kitchen drop it yeah uh so that became the core insight and we said that okay if we have to now create a food solution which is built on this insight how would we do it uh and the answer was then very simple that hey create a brand where where you declare each and every ingredient up front yeah so you go and say the food you're about to eat has a b c d e and nothing else that's how the brand name uh came about right and uh that's a very powerful thing to do because it removes any possibility of lying or obfusc- obfuscation from the table you can't do it yeah so we we very proudly call ourselves perhaps the only 100% clean label brand that we know of because you know even this has been turned into a marketing trick that some brands will put some of the ingredients which they want you to see on the front of pack and make you feel as if this is all there is but if you add it up it will add up to 80% what is the remaining 20% why is it hidden at the back i'm not rocket scientist but i'm fairly certain that people hide stuff that they are ashamed of which is why ingredients are written in small microscopic font at the back why is the front reserved for shouting out sugar free and fat free when at the back in microscopic font you have ingredients so we said we'll bring the back to the front and we we'll never put anything in our food that we are ashamed of and the proof of that is we'll declare it up front so that was the genesis of and nothing else or it and what would you say were the early signs of of uh, of perhaps success or or you as a founder knowing that you know this that your thesis is working so i think while there were uh, numerical markers which uh, uh, which you know uh, i actually uh, apart from numerical markers also love to look at uh you know anecdotal uh, stuff which tells me that this is working and there were there were three things which we started seeing very very early one was people started loving the product uh like the kind of consumer reactions uh, i have a fo- whole folder of long emails that consumers have written to us about how they felt that you know how the hell is this this tasty and in fact people asking us are you sure this is healthy because it is this taste right uh, and we st- and this was a fundamental thesis that we started our food philosophy uh, told us that when you use good ingredients food automatically becomes tasty it is not it's a false dichotomy again mom's food is the is the example it is a dichotomy that healthy food it is a false dichotomy that healthy food needs to taste like shit it doesn't yeah so i think that was the first marker the amount of product love we started getting in the beginning told me that hey at least this front we seem to be uh, uh, you know sorted the second one was uh, you know again i came from the school of thought that uh, uh, just pushing product 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 down down people's throat uh, is a really bad way of marketing uh, consumers engage with brands uh, either to get informed or to get entertained there is nothing else yeah you either make me laugh or cry or you inform me yeah uh, so that's exactly what we started doing so instagram is perhaps the only social channel where we are really uh, active and if you go down our insta feed 60% of our posts don't even have our brand logo on it because we're talking about whole wheat bread versus white bread sugar versus honey versus jaggery ketchup we don't even sell these products right why am i talking about these i'm talking about these because they matter to my consumer uh, and the kind of love we started getting there like uh, we went 
in the first three months we had 10000 followers in the next three months we had 80000 followers today we have 85000 followers and today is also by the way <laughs> eight and a half months down the line so it's not yeah. as if it's been a long time so i think that uh, uh, was the second marker uh, of uh, consumers getting not just the product but the brand uh, and the and the third thing was again you know i felt that our marketing language and brands marketing language is stuck in the 80s brands still talk to consumers as pesh karte hain aur aaiye dekhiye so who the hell talks like this now like consumers want brands to be human uh, and treat them as intelligent humans not as dumb humans like uh, you know uh, in the early days we were always taught that dumb it down for the consumer she doesn't have the time to spend on reading too much she is not very intelligent you need to dumb it down we went the other way we said we'll amp it up we'll detail it we'll talk in layers and layers and layers and bring out the truth and uh, and the kind of engagement we started getting that you know uh, hundreds of comments on each information post where people are trying to have conversations on the comments uh, and and uh, you know bringing in nuance told us that the brand identity that we are trying to create is working so i think these three things product brand and brand language brand identity uh, is what told me that we are onto something yeah yeah and i couldn't agree more uh, shashank i think we as investors talk a lot about product market fit um, it's just a fancier way of saying product love or or customer love and i think i can't think of a single brand that has more of that than uh, than the whole truth um, and actually you know you and i have been measuring this in in different ways from the beginning so nps of over 80 um, which puts you in a league of you know the the teslas and the nike's and the amazons of the world actually higher than higher than some of them as well um, repeat rates are are extremely high more than 50% uh, repeat month on month um, uh, inherent virality in the brand so people not only love consuming uh, the product but they love talking about the brand right which is which is your point about engaging with the consumer uh, i remember at one point we measured more than uh, or almost uh, 10% of buyers actually end up posting organically on on instagram uh, on a daily basis which is which creates crazy virality unpaid uh, virality for for the brand itself um and and which therefore leads to organic growth and and i know that's been the majority of our growth uh, unpaid uh, growth month on month so that virtuous loop to me um as an investor i think is is actually bullseye of of what one wants to do in a, in any sort of consumer consumer tech company right where the, the love is so strong that it leads to uh high repeats high word of mouth people telling their friends which leads to organic growth and 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 kind of keeps going from there um so yeah i i think that's that's something very very special uh, in terms of what we've built so far and if Now, i may if, if i may yeah. just add a thing there because you know the minute someone starts praising us the the superstitious middle class guy in me stands up and says you're just 9 months old don't don't let this go without the caveat otherwise the gods will frown upon you <laughs> uh i must say that uh, you know this this is not a done thing it's not abhi ye ho gaya hai now we have it it's something that mm. needs to be earned and re-earned every day that's what i keep telling my team internally that it's not done it's not as if abhi consumer love mil gaya hai uh you know it is through replying to comments and having conversations within 10 minutes of them getting posted that you earn it every day it is through constantly thinking about how can i you know wow you the next time you open my box uh that earns it every day so uh i would also you know just uh, uh just to make sure that this is my touchwood version of doing this that that i don't think like we are very early in the journey uh and we can lose it any day uh, uh yeah. and hence we are very cognizant that we have to keep re-earning it re-earning it re-earning it every other day absolutely absolutely and actually you know on your point about brand um that's a, in in addition to the product i think that's been one of the key features of of the the short journey so far and the success story so far so let's let's talk about that because i think that's one of the biggest things you're uh, undergoing today right the the transition from and nothing else to the whole truth 
So maybe yeah. maybe talk uh, and tell our viewers a little bit about how that came about and and what the 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 journey has been on that. It's a, another example in a constant streak of uh, seemingly stupid stuff. So, uh, so it was about I think four months ago. Uh, pretty much in the first month of the lockdown hitting and the pandemic hitting, that you know, I think all of us were forced into taking a pause and and introspecting about where is like humanity as a whole and hence what we are doing in it going. And uh, you know, in the at that time we were just five six months old, but we'd seen the uh, food industry from up close and personal. And I had started realizing that, you know, our initial hypothesis that the problem with food today is that ingredients are not declared up front was correct, but it was a narrow definition of the problem uh, because uh, you know the industry has made a, a a science out of obfuscating facts, and and there are many many. uh layers to how it is done uh, uh so why is it that my oat cookie uh, which is sold to me as this really healthy thing which has oats why is it that it has just 7% oats when i turn the pack uh, why is it that my protein packed uh, uh cookie has 2 grams of protein per 100 gram and why is it that my my sugar free uh chocolate has malted extrin which is worse than sugar but it doesn't need to be classified as sugar how do they get away with it and when i thought about it i realized on the front of pack you'll have a large shot of drippy chocolate which will make you feel that oh this is such a luscious luxurious thing uh when you realize otherwise or there'll be a claim saying protein packed i can't take you to court because you will say that hey i packed 2 grams of protein in 100 grams of product so you can get away with it so you know legally claim wise photography design all of these come together to create a camouflage uh, and it's this if i realize that if we have to take off this entire camouflage then we have to talk about a larger mission than just we'll bring the ingredients to the front of pack that's when the idea of the whole truth started taking uh, you know seed in my head and i and i took it to my team and they thought i'd gone crazy because as we said and nothing else is seeing some decent amount of success and and why fix something that isn't broken that's to have rule number 1 of management that don't touch something that is working uh but i think i am very proud that we uh, stood behind our conviction uh, and said that hey it is this conviction that made and nothing else whatever it was becoming in these 6 months we need to take it to its logical conclusion because we might not be broken uh, but the industry is so we are doing this not to fix ourselves we are doing it to fix the ecosystem uh, and to prove uh, be a positive example that you can do well by doing good uh, you you know these two things are not in loggerheads with each other you can uh, sell the truth you you don't need to sell lies uh yeah so uh, that was pretty much uh, again it was a uh, a heart led decision uh, a gut led decision but i think over the years i've realized that your gut is nothing but a subconscious compilation of your experiences uh, so mm-hmm. i i i i felt we should stand by it and and the entire team got behind it and hence we evolved from and nothing else becoming the whole truth very very impressive so you know i think you mentioned a couple of interesting things there and and one is very close to my heart as well which is the the purpose and and the mission of of the uh, of the brand so let's talk about that one why does it matter uh, why do you need to have a mission or a purpose um, and then second how does the whole truth fulfill that uh, purpose or mission i think that's a great question it strikes at the heart of why brands came to be in the first place so uh, if we t- take a small trip down history lane let's say go back 200 years we were all eating and living locally we had our local bakery our local butcher or in the indian context our local atta guy and our local dal guy uh, at that mm-hmm. time brands didn't exist because i didn't need them i knew john's bread is the best i used to go to his bakery get his bread come back right 
then industrialization happened cities happened people moved away from their food sources uh, now food was made in some obscure outskirts of the country and then brought in to me and then when i went to the supermarket i didn't have the time energy mental bandwidth to you know try and figure out ye jo 10 bread padi hai on the shelf which one is the best one so i told john that hey why don't you put your label saying john on your bread so that i can identify this is john's bread i know john's bread is great i trust it and hence i'm going to pick up this bread yeah so brand started off as a symbol and a shorthand for trust that's all brands were right as this progressed and industrialization happened most products started looking like each other uh you know uh, at the back end consolidation happened economies of scale kicked in today for example all the lipstick in the world is made by two or three global manufacturers uh, sitting out of europe similarly for all personal care for a lot of food etc right so consumers also caught on they realized that you know most probably products mein itna differentiation abhi nahi hai uh and all of them are you know especially in personal care sector they are effective because there are certain molecules which which uh, do the job and hence consumers moved on to asking brands to go from just being custodians of trust to standing for something larger than the product that they sell which is where purpose came in consumers said brand you need to be the best version of us you need to be holier than thou you need to you can't have the imperfections you can but you should aspire to be the best versions of of us and hence have a purpose are you about the planet are you about uh, uh, you know women empowerment are you about uh, ensuring that no child abuse happens what is it that you stand for uh, and that by the way is something that i've learned from unilever uh, they've always it's always been a company which has been focused on purpose led brand so life boy isn't just a piece of soap life boy does everything it can to help a child reach 5 because uh, we know that a large percentage of kids die before they reach 5 purely because they don't wash their hands and they get infected and their immune systems are not strong enough and hence they die uh, so a soap gets elevated to another level when it says i'm going to help your child reach 5 because when a child reaches 5 the chances of mortality drop dramatically yeah so i think brands with purpose not only do they matter they are the only way for brands to exist in today's world uh and in the food and fitness world the step one which was custodians of trust that itself we are falling short on we are losing consumers trust forget about taking step two and going to uh, being a purpose led brand so i think there is a huge opportunity that's opened up uh to do a business which sits very well with your conscience does the right thing and makes money because you know the beautiful thing that capitalism is the checks and balances have given uh, uh made this a viable market hmm. very interesting and and uh, and talk a little bit about the second part how does the whole truth uh fit this narrative and and your your purpose why is it the right uh, right brand for you i think it's in the name uh we wanted you know we kept thinking when we were thinking about what should be the name of the brand and uh, many thoughts came to our mind honestly speaking was one example and to be honest mm. was one example we went through a lot of names and finally mm. we said why are we trying to over engineer this what are we trying to say we are trying to say the whole truth call ourselves the whole truth and uh, uh, because what is transparency what is trust the the beautiful thing about trust is it doesn't operate at 99% transparency even if there is a seed of a doubt you lose trust and hence you have to speak the whole truth is it scary it is very scary like <laughs> uh we are not infallible we don't know everything uh 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 will consumer some day stand up and say you also do this and why aren't you talking about this like the other day someone commented saying will you also tell us uh, how much profit you make out of these bars and and you know where do you put this profit and uh, and you'll have to tackle all of this because you are asking for it yeah but we said 
we'll tell you the whole truth even about our shortcomings we'll accept yes we don't know everything uh, uh, but that we we felt that that was the only way uh, to set the foundation of uh, the building that we wanted to make on top which is you know floor upon floor of unearthing uh, the truth and giving you uh, the complete picture not trying to do a seven effective ways to get six pack abs we are not that uh, uh, we are about telling you the whole truth of sugar and how it starts and how it affects your body and once we tell you about it it's that japanese saying that we will not give you fish but we'll teach you how to fish once we once we give you that you will figure out the way to get abs uh, right so so that's why i believe this is the this is where we had to be this is truly who we were already as i said on instagram etc we were not talking about our brand at all uh, mm. uh, we were just disseminating uh, the truths that we knew we said might as well call ourselves that um i want to wrap up by by talking about the future a little bit and uh, and again you know it's something that's you and i get very excited about in terms of the potential and and the vision of of uh, where the whole truth can go so why don't you talk a little bit about that you know why this is just the the bars is just the starting point and and what the the bigger vision for the company is so the bigger vision for us is uh, it's an internal statement that we happily put out there is to rebuild the world's trust in its food uh and there are two ways there are two things we need to do to rebuild that trust one is uh, put out content that people can look to uh, to educate themselves uh, and the second is not just be a bystander giving you comment and and content but giving you an alternative to act upon which is which is what we do through the product and when it comes to products uh, our philosophy is simple if you create a venn diagram uh, of three intersecting circles the first one is is there a food category where consumers are being lied to uh, or facts are being obfuscated second can we make a food product which lives up to the whole truth philosophy in that category and third is is it tasty because food needs to be tasty uh, wherever these three circles intersect uh, we'll enter uh, yeah that's uh, that's the simple guiding mission uh that we have that wherever we see these three truths coming together we will do our best to give consumers the alternative that we believe they should have very cool um thank you again shashank for uh, for sharing everything so candidly uh as a as a consumer i'm i'm thankful for for a product that uh, i don't have to feel guilty about having uh, and actually i feel pretty happy about having uh and as a a partner it's been a it's been a privilege and uh and a lot of fun having a ringside view and working together and i and i hope to uh, continue that over over a long and successful journey so thank you for joining us today thank you the pleasure is mine uh, as i said i am constantly amazed that uh, uh, that you guys did this that you that you backed us uh, uh like you've been a big enabler and i in my wildest dreams i wouldn't have thought uh, uh you know that that someone like the matrix would would back uh, such a uh, you know a cpg brand which had such a lofty vision and perhaps what initially looks like a small tam uh, uh but yeah it's been it's been a super duper fun right thank you so much for that and for having me today it's been a pleasure thanks thanks shashan thank you thanks for tuning in For more Matrix Moments episodes, you can head to www.matrixpartners.in/blog. You can also follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube for more updates.